So you're thinking about going on a cruise. Awesome. It's one of the best value vacations you can possibly find. But now the idea is to avoid the potholes that will reduce that value and staying away from those cruise line ripoffs. Stay tuned. Hi everyone, this is Rob from Cruise Seekers and today we are going to go through everything you need to know on how to avoid those big time cruise ripoffs that everybody gets to see when they go on a ship. Now, I know a lot of first time cruisers will be bombarded and get information overload once they walk on the ship. It's part of the deal, right? I remember my first cruise and just being in awe of everything and seeing all the things that are on display and that are on offer and things that I get hit with before I even get on the cruise and hey, add this to the cruise and add this to the cruise. It will make it better. It will make it so much easier for you. Yes, they will make it easier for you, but I don't know about better. We'll have to kind of talk about that. So let's get through all the different things that the cruise line is going to try to do to depart more money from your wallet and into theirs. Now, what we're going to talk about first is when you are actually thinking about contemplating a cruise and you're on the booking site and you're looking at booking a cruise, one of the first things the cruise lines are going to try to do when you are booking is try to get you enticed by a promo package. Now, these promo packages can save you a decent amount of money, especially if this is the way you want to cruise. You want to cruise with a drink package. You want to cruise with Wi-Fi. You want to use the cruise line for excursions. You will save money if you do purchase a perk package, but that's the big if, right? If that's the way you want to cruise. Now, do you really need a drink package? That's one question you're going to have to ask. What kind of drinking are you going to plan on doing while you're on the cruise? Are you going to be a heavy drinker? Are you a light drinker? Are you just kind of a moderate drinker here and there? Do you like beer? Do you like wine? All these things kind of have to come into your equation. There are many different drink calculators that you can find on the internet. Definitely take a look at it. Put in how you feel like you are going to want to cruise and see if those drink packages that get included in the perk packages might be beneficial for you. Yeah, it's a great idea to purchase these things up front. You will save the most money when you purchase a drink package at booking if you include it in a perk package. But just make sure that it's good for you and the way you want to cruise. Now, the other thing with internet, a lot of cruise lines do add in internet in their perk packages, but you've got to remember one thing. Look at the fine print. See what kind of internet package you will get. Some of them just give you minutes. Some of them do give you unlimited limited internet, but it's on a basic internet package. So you're not going to be able to stream. You're not going to be able to FaceTime. If those things are important to you, then you might have to say, okay, what kind of extra am I going to have to pay on top of the extra that I'm already paying? So you see what the theme here is folks, right? They bring you in with one package and then they know sometimes a good majority of the people are going to have to upgrade for using the package the way they want to use it. You see that now too in drink packages. Beforehand, you used to have one drink package, right? You will have either, well, maybe not one. You might have two, right? You might have the soda package and then you might have the alcohol package. Now they're kind of starting to stratify these things. You will have a classic drink package and then a premium drink package, which they then separate the different types of alcohol that you can get in one package versus the other. Or they might increase the limit of the per drink per glass amount for one package and then increase it a little higher for the other one. So it's no longer quote unquote truly inclusive. When you get the lower drink package, you might need to upgrade that if you want the more premium alcohol brands or you want to try some more of the mixology type of cocktails those are the things where cruise lines are going to just keep on trying to entice more money and more money out of your pocket so that it can funnel into theirs so since I'm kind of on this package you know spiel right now let me just kind of reiterate what I say in many videos all over the place just please don't purchase your packages on the cruise ship. That's where you're going to spend the most money. That's where the biggest ripoff is going to come from. Well, it's not really a ripoff. It's just more of a convenience, right? They're getting people who just didn't realize what was going on and how they can purchase things ahead of time. You know now by watching this video, you can purchase these things ahead of time. So save some money, folks. If you're going to purchase a drink package, if you're going to purchase Wi-Fi, if you're going to purchase a photo package, any package, any package whatsoever, a dining package, you name it, uh, even just a single meal, purchase it before you get on the ship because you'll save the most money there. 
And before I leave booking, let's talk a little bit about travel insurance because the cruise lines will present travel insurance to you at the time of booking. First off, I don't believe the cruise lines travel insurance will get you 100% of the coverage you need. You have to think about exactly what is the cruise lines travel insurance covering. You need to understand that. While a third party will cover your whole trip, the cruise lines travel insurance will only cover the things that you've purchased through the cruise line. So that's number one. Number two, take a look at the coverage level. See what you get from the cruise lines for the different coverages versus a third party. And third, take a look at the pricing for the coverage levels. All right, we finally got past all the things that are before the cruise, right? We talked about purchasing your stuff ahead of time. We want to make sure you're saving the most amount of money. Now let's talk about when you are on the ship. And the very first thing we're going to talk about are those cruise sales. Now the cruise sales are going to have these very tailor-made marketing directed to kind of entice you to walk in to see what's on offer, right? 70% off or buy one, get two free or the everything is $10 sale, right? They're going to definitely try to entice you by these very slick marketing techniques to get you into the venue to see what's on offer, to see what you can purchase. Now the 70% off sales, right? That is the one that gets me the most right? because I see so many times when you go into these 70 percent off sales and it's usually for like watches or high ticket items right they're going to absolutely inflate the heck out of the original list price you're going to look at this watch and you're going to see this price and you're going to turn it around and it's going to say 130 dollars but the original price was like a thousand dollars it's never ever ever sold for a thousand dollars folks it just never did it never ever did you just have to understand that this is just a marketing ploy to get you in there to make you think you got a good deal. Definitely don't be enticed too heavily by the 70% off sale. Don't think you're getting the best deal ever. You, you probably are not. <laughs> don't get trapped by the marketing ploy. The next thing we're going to talk about now is excursions, shore excursions. So basically what the cruise lines are doing are they're basically living on the fear that people are going to be sitting at the pier watching their cruise ship sail away sail away and you're going to be stuck there so they're playing on that fear and they're charging a premium because of that fear 90 percent of all excursions that you can find on a cruise ship is actually provided by a tour conductor that the cruise line contracts with and then they make a markup on top of that fare you're going to be able to find those same tour conductors on your own and save that markup all right, so before I go further, I got a question for you. Do you like this video? Is it going good for you? If you do, think about subscribing and turn that notification bell on. It's so important for us. We would love to have you as a member of the Cruise Seekers crew. You'll get notified when we put new content. We're trying to put a lot more new content out this year. So think about subscribing, turn that notification bell on. We would love for you to do it. It's so appreciated. Thank you so much. So now let's talk a little bit about the spa on board. The spa on board is contracted out by the cruise lines. The spa is made to be a money-making location for that person that's contracting out that space and the cruise line gets a cut. So yeah, they really try to get you to purchase those services and those services are not cheap folks. They are just not cheap at all. A matter of fact, you're going to spend about the same amount of money as a five-star spa resort on the land. So it's definitely not cheap at all. And these people also will try to upsell if you do purchase a treatment that you really want. Say that you really want a massage, right? And they, it's a good massage. You have a great massage, but they're going to definitely tell you like, oh, you have some really dry skin in this area. Maybe you should do a scrub or, hey, we have some really good stuff here that we use when we are doing the massage to help smooth out that location, a good moisturizer, a good um, who knows what, right? Basically, what they're going to try to do is get add-ons, right? They're going to try to get an add-on service or they're going to try to get another purchase of some product. That's how they make even more money versus the service. The other thing too is if you don't want to be upselled when you are in that session, just let them know ahead of time. They're usually very good about that. Now, another area in the ship, similar to the spa, is going to be the art exhibit, where you will be able to go to, to kind of go get some champagne and maybe participate in a art lecture followed by an auction. It's gonna feel very Sotheby's-like, right? Oh, wow, I am really high class and I'm going to be in an art auction and I might be able to purchase an investment piece. It's not investment pieces. 
it makes it feel like an investment pieces by the whole ambiance of the whole situation. It's not an investment piece. Purchase the art if you really like the art. That's the only reason to purchase it. Do not purchase it for investment. It's not an investment piece, folks. That's it, plain and simple. That's all I'm gonna say about the art place. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. Purchase it if you like it, if you get real enjoyment out of it, don't expect anything more from it. Now, another thing you're going to be presented either in the cruise planner or on your app, usually within the first sea day before you get to your first port is a shopping type of uh, event, right? Where you will go through all the ports of calls and see exactly what you can buy at these ports of calls. Now, you're going to be introduced here to someone called the expert shopper on the cruise line. So... I don't understand why you need an expert shopper. I think everybody knows how to shop. Basically, what's going to happen here, folks, is you're going to an event where you're going to be introduced to the vendors at the ports that made a relationship with the cruise line. It's the same vendors all the time. They are paying a marketing fee to the cruise lines to be advertised about them to you when you go to these facilities. You know how to shop. Do some research on the port. Find where the locals go. Get some authentic mementos from these locations rather than these large pocketed big vendors in these ports that can just entice you by using their marketing dollars on the cruise ship. Find where the locals go. Find some authentic mementos. You'll be much happier. And you know what? You did your own shopping. You didn't need an expert. Now, another area where there's just an absolutely huge markup in the cruise lines is the photography area. You're gonna have people running all over the place wanting to take pictures of you in certain locations when you're eating dinner, wherever it might be. And these pictures can cost up to 10, 12, 15, $20 a pop. So it's expensive. You can take your own photographs now, folks. We have a camera in our pockets now. It's in our cell phones. We can take our selfies. We can have other people take pictures of us. It just works. Don't worry about so much about the photographs on the ship. Now, if you do want some of the nice backdrops and you want some of the interesting kind of poses that they do, by all means, do it. But if you're gonna do that, look at the packages ahead of time. Remember what I talked about earlier in this video? Definitely purchase anything that you wanna buy on the ship ahead of time. One of those things can be a photography package. You can usually get a good deal for a large amount of digital photographs for a reasonable amount of money if you do it ahead of time. Now, one of the other biggest ripoffs you will find on a cruise ship are the things that are kind of geared toward the kids, right? Your kids who you just love and adore, they are big time targets to the cruise line so that they can become their marketing engine to their parents. But I want it, mom, but I want it, but I want it, dad, I want it. It's hard to say no to your kids, it really is. It just is, I always had a hard time. I'm a sucker, I guess I'm a sucker. But anyway, the candy, right? Why? Why spend the crazy money for candy on a cruise ship? It's nuts. Bring your own candy. Ask your kids before you go on the ship, hey, what candy do you want to have in the cabin? This way, when they go to the candy store and they go, oh, oh, can I have it? No, 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 we got candy in the cabin. See, you kind of headed that one off in the past. <laughs> it's one of the tricks that I used to do. The other thing too, the arcade. That was a hard one for my kids, right? They, they love video games. Thank God now we can all carry them with our you know, iPad and our iPhone or whatever it might be, your Android device, a tablet of some sort. The arcade is really not needed anymore. The kids can play games on these devices. Thank God, thank God, thank God. But still, there's some of them are really nice and more interactive now, right? They realize, you know what? The li Little Miss Pac-Man game is not cutting it anymore, right? They need something more interactive. So you're seeing more virtual reality things starting to come into play. I guess you would call them experiences where you kind of sit into this thing that it looks like a real car and it's bouncing you all over the place or this thing where you put over your head and you think you're Darth Vader and you're playing this lightsaber game. So. There's things now that are trying to be more enticing to get you to spend that money in those areas. So you're seeing these arcades transition from traditional arcades, right, to more of these virtual reality complexes. So yeah, it's gonna be hard to say no to that one, folks. I understand, but you know what? Talk to your kids ahead of time, maybe set a budget. Sometimes even some cruise lines do have the ability to get a, a package of some sort, X amount of dollars to spend in the arcade, and you can set your budget that way. 
that's a way to kind of just limit that expense, but it's hard. I understand. I just tell the kids usually there's so many other cool things that are included in the cruise fair. Let's do those first. And if we're bored afterwards, maybe we'll swing over to the arcade later. We just talked about the kids arcade. Let's talk about the adults arcade. That's the casino. Now, folks, I know I love dancing with Lady Luck. I love pushing the slot machine button. I love playing blackjack. I love playing craps. I love, love, love playing poker. But you know what? I do understand that the odds of winning on a cruise ship is worse than anywhere else. Just the facts, folks. Something that you just can't get around. You're going to see it when you're playing blackjack. You're going to see different types of odds that you normally don't see. Hey, what happened to three to two? It's not there. You play some video poker. Where's the poker machine that I like that has the better payoffs? It's not going to be there. When you're playing the slot machines, it just seems like it's just sucking money away all the time, all the time, all the time. The odds on a cruise ship of winning are much lower than any other place. The house cut is just very high. Just understand that. Don't get frustrated. If this is something that gives you enjoyment, make a budget. Say, this is how much my budget for casino entertainment will be. And just stick with it because the odds of winning is going to be much lower than being on a land-based casino. It's the way it is. It's a ripoff. That's how the casino works on a cruise ship. It's a profit center. So there you go, folks. Those are my things to avoid when you are on a cruise ship because they are ripoffs. Do these things, folks, and you will definitely save some money. You'll be avoiding the different pitfalls that you can fall into when you're on a cruise ship that will try to extract more money out of your wallet and into the cruise line's wallet. This is what you're going to want to follow. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. It really does help the YouTube algorithm. We would love for you to hit that like button. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. We love hearing from you. We respond to all of our comments. And if you haven't already, please think about subscribing and turning on that notification bell. It's so important to us and we thank you for doing such. Until we talk again, this is Rob from Cruise Seekers reminding each and every one of you to always seek the seats. Bye now.